It's another Q&A edition of Optimal Health Daily, episode 610, and I'm Dr. Neil, your host of the show. Welcome back to another Friday show where I play your questions and simply answer them. On all the other days, I read health and fitness blogs to you like an audiobook, with permission from the authors, of course. So no, Dr. Neil is not just a nickname. I do have my doctorate degree in public health with an emphasis in chronic disease prevention and nutrition. I'm also a registered dietitian nutritionist, a certified health education specialist, and a certified exercise physiologist through the American College of Sports Medicine. When I'm not doing this podcast, I act as chair of the Department of Nutrition and Basic Sciences at Bastyr University, California, and I also hold faculty positions at two other institutions. So needless to say, Health, wellness, nutrition, stress management, all of these things are truly my passions and I love educating others about this stuff. And so one of my favorite parts of this show is getting to answer your questions. I'll let you know how you can send in your question at the end of the show. So for now, let's jump right to it, hear today's question and start optimizing your life. Hi, Dr. Neal. My name is Linda from Wisconsin and I have a question in the fitness genre. I recently started resistance training at the gym using the machines, and I noticed that on the machines, there is a diagram as to how to do a rep from start to end, and I'm wondering if that's considered a full rep. I often see people doing quick bursts where they aren't doing a full rep. For example, on the leg press, they will not fully extend their leg, they'll maybe keep the legs bent halfway and do quick bursts of maybe 10 to 20 and then they'll stop and rest and then repeat. Um, If you could clarify for me what is the correct way to do a rep. Thank you. Thank you for your question, Linda. I hope you're enjoying resistance training so far. For me, it's one of my favorite parts of my workout. Now, I'm willing to guess that your observation of others at the gym is shared by many on any given day. If you really take a moment to notice what everyone else is doing in the weight room, you'll find folks performing a variety of routines using different numbers of repetitions and sets, different exercises, and of course, as you mentioned, Linda, different form. What's so interesting about exercise, and well, actually nutrition for that matter, is that some exercises go in and out of favor. For example, think back to the 1980s when aerobics were in style. Think jazzercise and spandex. Or maybe not, that's not an appealing visual. Moving into the 1990s, fitness videos like Taibo and home gyms like Bowflex were all the rage. The early 2000s brought us P90X and Insanity, which emphasized functional high-intensity training. And now we have spinning, yoga, CrossFit, Barre, Zumba, and the list goes on and on. Between all of these training styles, we often find mutations of sorts, where folks will follow the general premise of the style of training they prefer with some modifications. So my long-winded point is this. It's hard to keep up with all of these trends. So the fact that you're seeing more and more folks not performing reps at their fullest range of motion is not surprising. And this is because this has gone in and out of favor since bodybuilding was all the rage back in the 1970s. So trends come and go. And this seems to be a trend that's kind of resurging at the moment. Now, I'll start by saying there may be good reasons why folks only perform partial reps. Sometimes performing a movement through its full range of motion can be painful. For example, when I first train someone to perform a standing squat just using their body weight, I may not have them perform a deep squat so that their bottom touches the ground before they stand back up. Instead, I may have them stop halfway so that their bottom is parallel to the ground as if they were attempting to sit in a chair. This is because it may be too painful or too much stress on their knees to perform a full deep squat. The same goes for performing bench press or chest presses. I often don't have folks lower the barbell or the dumbbells all the way down to their chests because it may place too much strain on their shoulders and elbows. So partial reps can be a nice way to ensure safety and prevent injury or further damage. But let's say you do have the ability to use your full range of motion without any aches and pains? Would it provide you with similar strength gains? What's unfortunate is that there aren't many published studies examining the effects of partial reps versus full reps and how it affects strength. Much of what we know is anecdotal, meaning you'll get so-called experts talking about the benefits of partial reps based on their experiences training others. 
But because this was not a systematic analysis, all sorts of biases can pop up. Some exercise physiologists believe that performing partial repetitions is ideal because it forces you to engage your muscles through the entire repetition. So for example, when you use the full range of motion, the argument is that you're not engaging your muscles at the very top or very bottom of that movement. So using my example of performing a squat, if we were to perform squats using the full range of motion so that our bottoms have to touch the ground with each rep, would we really be engaging our muscles at that moment when our bottoms actually touch the ground? Some say no, that at that point, when your bottom touches the ground, you're no longer engaging your leg muscles, more specifically the quadriceps. But I will say that this is a bit short-sighted. Performing repetitions through their full range of motion, when it's safe to do so, can potentially prevent injury and promote flexibility. When it comes to whether strength gains are comparable using partial reps as opposed to full reps, again, the data are limited. First, there aren't many published studies, and second, those that have been published used only a few individuals and looked at them just for a short period of time. Add to this the fact that they only examine one or two moves, like bench press and squats, for example. They don't necessarily study how it affects shoulder presses or one-arm rows or bicep curls or lat pull-downs or tricep extensions or exercises performed using machines. So we really can't say with any confidence how effective partial reps can be. So what's the bottom line then? If you are willing and able, aim to perform exercises using the full range of motion. If it's uncomfortable to do so, go as far as you can through the range of motion, but stop before you feel discomfort. Then gradually see if the discomfort goes away with time and practice. If it does, increase your range of motion again, but stop when it feels uncomfortable. Really, the key is to concentrate on the work you're doing. Imagine going through that full range of motion and your muscles getting stronger as you perform each rep. Think about how this exercise is going to help you feel your best. This way, you're gonna be in tune with your body as you perform every single repetition of every single set to minimize injury, maximize your gains, and help you feel your best. Thank you again for the question, Linda. You'll be entered into a very small raffle every month to win a book. And if you wanna be in the raffle, send me a question just come by oldpodcast.com slash ask. Or you can do it the old-fashioned way and call in your question. The number is 61 I love ohd Both methods are in this episode's description, which you can find at oldpodcast.com. Wow, another week has flown by. Thank you, as always, for listening every day. Thank you for listening all the way through. Thank you for sharing this show with someone. I hope you have a wonderful weekend, and I'll see you back here on Monday where your optimal life awaits. Hello, Life Optimizer. This is Justin Mollick, creator and producer of this show and Optimal Living Daily, the brother podcast of this one. Literally, I'm Dr. Neil's brother. If you like the format of this show, you'll love Optimal Living Daily too, where I also read to you from blogs, but cover other topics like personal development, finance, and minimalism from bloggers like Derek Sivers, The Minimalists, Zen Habits, and many more. So for more amazing content read to you for free, Come subscribe to Optimal Living Daily too, and together we'll optimize your life. You've been listening to Optimal Health Daily. Be sure to hit the subscribe button to stay up to date on each new episode and head to oldpodcast.com. That's oldpodcast.com for a free gift as well as more actionable tips and resources to help you maximize your potential. Thanks for joining us and remember, your optimal life awaits.